Is that it? It's here. My God. Here it is. Finally here. Is that really it? So, so special. I think that's a camera. This is it, the long-awaited, much-anticipated Sony A7 IV. Kind of a boring release, you know? It's not the resolution monster of the Sony A7R4, and it's not a speed demon like the Sony A1. It's certainly no video powerhouse like the A7S Mark III. But what it is, is a little bit of all of those cameras wrapped up into one. Minus one feature, though, that kind of frustrates me. But plus one feature that I am so excited about. So let's dive into it. They've come a long way. I've been using the a7 IV now for just over a week. And while I don't have any conclusive conclusions, I have a lot of early thoughts that are quite positive. <laughs> that guy's got music on. He's a, he's a real music lover. Uh, we're on our way right now to meet up with a fellow YouTuber from the area that we found. And they've got this really interesting niche on YouTube that they work in. And I thought they'd make a really cool subject to go behind the scenes with and film the filming of uh, a little YouTube channel trailer that I thought we could make them, as well as some photos that we could shoot for their social media pages. Um, I'm really excited to meet up, so let's meet up. Okay. So, when you... <laughs> wow. When you go metal detecting, is there something that you're uh, really excited about trying to find? This is Liam, a local historian, explorer, and the host of my new favorite YouTube channel, Liam Lutz Hamilton. Oh, and did I mention he's eight years old? Yeah, he's an eight-year-old YouTuber. It's amazing. We should actually start up there because that's where we actually found A few months ago, I made the switch from Canon primarily over to Sony primarily, and it was largely because of this camera right here. It's the Sony FX3. What it left me with, unfortunately, was a photography-shaped hole in my heart. I knew I needed a second camera, I knew I needed a second body, but I wanted it to be both a photo-oriented camera, but also function as a really high-quality B camera for the FX3 here. So I wanted it to have 10-bit 422 color. I wanted it to just match up a little better with this FX3. And right now, this a7 IV really fits the bill. It looks like it's gonna be a great photo camera for me and a great B video machine. As far as the image quality is concerned, I'm sure there's no surprise here. It's very good in both photo and video. The images look fantastic. I did some early tests before we went out and shot with Liam because I wanted to make sure I was comfortable at different ISOs and I was honestly kind of surprised at how good the high ISO performance was. I did put both of these cameras up to like 50,000 ISO because I thought I would see a massive difference between the two. Um, but I was honestly shocked at how not bad the a7 IV looked in the studio at 50,000 ISO. Raw images look great, there's loads of dynamic range, 33 megapixels, in my opinion, for my work, is a nice sweet spot between file size and actually having room to play around with. What I'm loving about this camera is they've got this little photo video switch here, which is something I used to use on my like earliest DSLRs. And what's great for a shoot like this is I'm able to just be in video mode, get some clips, and without needing to even change my settings necessarily, uh, I can just pop it over into photo, pow, 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 shoot some photos, back into video, roll some video. The only thing though is that there's a photo section, a video section, and then the S and Q, which is their slow motion and or time lapse. And I wish video was on the far end of it so that I could just quickly kind of reef on it and go from one to the other, where I actually have to be a little bit intentional to get it into video. Not a huge issue, 
but it could have been easier. So in terms of like the, the hybrid photo and video quality that I was looking for, the a7 IV has almost everything that I was looking for. The only real drawback for me is that the 4K60 is cropped. I know it's not a huge deal because most films ever are shot Super 35, but because this is a hybrid machine meant to cross between photo and video, if you're snapping photos and then swap it into 4K60 for video really quickly to get some clips, you all of a sudden have a different focal length and that's kind of annoying. And while the 4K60 looks great, I wish they offered us like a, a pixel bin version or something like that that was full frame so that if you wanted to act quickly and just get those shots for photo and video, say you're shooting a wedding, um, it'd be a little bit easier. Let's talk about the price point. So it's coming in at $2,500 at B&H, which puts it right in the same ballpark as this, the Canon R6. And these cameras, I actually think are quite comparable and they each have some pros and they each have some cons. On the a7 IV, you're getting 33 megapixels versus the 20 or 21 on the R6. I forget exactly. They're both giving you a nice log profile, 10-bit 422 video, where the R6 pulls ahead a little bit is that the 4K60 is uncropped, but then it falls behind with its overheating issues, especially at 4K60, and its record limitations of the 29 minute variety. Also, as a hybrid shooter, the a7 IV is just a little bit better having this quick photo video switch right at your finger. I wish Canon just kept that little knobby thing. They put it back in the R3, but. One thing that I really love about, I mean, most of the new Sony cameras is that you have IBIS, but it's not so strong that you get that gnarly wobble in the corners. And then if you really do want some like extra strong stabilization, they have an active mode. And I've just been leaving that on the whole time because you can just really get a much more steady shot like following through these trails. Oh yes, and the one thing that I'm really, really genuinely excited about is a feature that the R6 didn't have, the FX3 doesn't have, my C70 doesn't have. No camera I've ever owned has had this feature and that's focus breathing compensation. You might have noticed at the beginning of this video when I first held up the camera and it racked focus to my face, a lot of focus breathing and that's this lens in particular, the 14 millimeter 1.8, but honestly most of my Sony lenses, most of my Canon lenses, most photographic lenses have a lot of focus breathing. So if I were to do something like this, you'll see the edges of the frame change as the lens slightly changes its magnification to change focus. However, the a7 IV has a setting called lens breathing compensation, which is basically just fixing this problem with some digital cropping. But look how much better it looks when I do this after switching the focus breathing compensation on. One second. There we go, it's probably a little bit of a crop. However, now, it's just, what is this, a cinema lens? It looks so much better. This is the Sony 20 millimeter 1.8 breathing compensation turned off and you'll see same issue going on here. It's got a nice focus breathing issue. And if I turn it on, it makes it significantly less distracting to have rack focuses in your shot because the only thing that's happening is the rack focus. There's not also a shift in perspective. Oh wait, the focus breathing compensation doesn't work on the Zeiss 55. I think there's a list of approved lenses and this isn't one of them. So uh, now I really wish I bought the 1.2. What's annoying is that out in the field, I preferred shooting on the a7 IV to the FX3, but I thought, well, at least the FX3 makes a better studio camera. Except when I'm doing stuff like this and now the a7 IV makes a better studio camera. I would actually probably shoot all of my talking heads on this camera in the future and I, Really hope Sony implements this via firmware to other cameras because it is just digitally done. It is just understanding its own native lenses and how they breathe and then compensating them with a little bit of a crop. This is pretty cool. It actually has engravings and it looks super cool. It looks like a factory smokestack, uh. but it isn't. Like a, one of those things that have those spirals on it, it looks like that, except shrunk down to a very small size. 
Can we give a huge round of applause for our friend Liam from Liam Luz Hamilton? What a cool kid, just so much fun to hang out with. We loved having him show us through the forest and that was fantastic. The film we're making from him should be out in a week or so. It'll probably be called The Treasure Hunter. I don't really know. But if you're interested in seeing what we put together for Liam, that'll be on my channel, hopefully on his channel as well. So subscribe to see more of that. And yeah, go go subscribe to Liam's channel, actually. Like if you're interested in treasure hunting or metal detecting, uh, what's that other one? Magnet fishing, check out his channel. Go give him some support. Real cool kid, I love what he's doing. Thanks for watching, Sony A7 IV. It's a pretty cool camera. You're a pretty cool person. Mom.